The Predators face someone in this series who becomes one of their most dangerous enemies ever. And you may have a hard time believing it, but I'm telling you, it's amazing. What I love about this series is that it takes place in the same continuity as the main Predator films. The 1987 Predator, 1997 Predator 2, 2010's Predators, and the 2018 Predator. It doesn't mention 2022's Prey because I'm assuming this story was already written as that was being filmed. One thing I want to mention here for those who may not know this about the Predators is their alien species name is Yaucha. So I might go back and forth referring to them as Predators or Yaucha. Okay, so this story opens in the year 2056. We go to this remote planet with what seems to be two Predators battling. One I'm going to call Golden Predator, the other one Grey Predator. Just simply separating them by the color of their armor for now. The fight goes back and forth. The Golden Predator lands a blow with its axe against the Grey One. The Grey Predator quickly responds, knocking back the Golden One downhill, losing its axe in the process. The Grey Predator tries to land a killing blow, but the Golden Predator ends it with a combination of its shuriken and blade. As it lays bleeding on the ground, the Grey Predator takes off its helmet. At that moment, the Golden Predator slices its head off. It then removes its own helm, revealing itself to be not a Predator, but a human. This human is a woman named Theta Berwick. After reading this series, she has become one of my favorite characters of all time. She is a great mix of Ellen Ripley's survival instincts from Aliens, and Beatrix Kiddo's killer instincts from Kill Bill. You may be asking yourself, how did she gain access to the Yaucha's armor and weapons, and why is she screaming, damn it? I'm going to explain all that right now. So 15 years ago on this planet called Damara, Theta's parents, Hugo and Francesca Berwick, who were botanists for Astar Industries, were studying this planet. Now, Astar Industries just seems to be this galaxy-wide industrial business that explores the galaxy, studies planets, and has outposts on m multiple planets. Theta and her parents ended up being attacked by a predator. Theta, horrified, saw her father killed by it. She and her mother ran back to their ship that's called the Sandpiper, and her mother tried to warn the crew that they were under attack. But the predator had already caught up to them. They witness one of the crew get their head blown right off in front of them. One by one, the Sandpiper's troops were being taken out by the Predator. It was a straight up slaughter fest. Even with their advanced weaponry, they still had no chance. Once Theta and her mother entered the ship, Theta's mother told her to hide in the lab and not come out until Sandy, the Sandpiper's AI, said it was safe. After that, Theta was supposed to program Sandy's autopilot to bring her back to Earth. However, before her and her mother got a chance to seal the lab, the Predator was already there. It grabbed her mother and started choking her. When the Predator removed its helm, Theta's mother sliced one of its mandibles off with a machete, but it didn't stop the Predator from ending her. Theta grabbed the machete and confronted it, but the Predator, deeming her not worthy enough to kill, just left. As her mother was dying, she told Sandy to get Theta off the planet and told Theta to never forget she and her father love her. Ever since that day, Theta has hunted and killed every single Predator she's come across, searching for the Predator who killed her parents. The Grey Armored Predator she just killed was her 25th one. She was pissed that yet again, it wasn't the one she's been searching for. We learn in all these years on her quest for vengeance, she has been learning everything she can about the Yaucha. She blows up the Grey Armor Predator ship and then comes across this alien species that inhabits this planet. She tries to assure them she's a friend, but the problem with that is, one, they don't understand her, and two, she is wearing the same armor as the Predator she killed the same one who has been hunting them down one by one before she arrived. So they view her as an enemy. They start firing at her and she just makes a run for it. Luckily she makes it to her ship and takes off. Now this red egg shaped device Theta took off the Predator ship is a drive that contains the Predator's hunting routes. 
They possibly contain even more data than that, but Theta and Sandy have only been able to decipher the travel logs. She discovered these drives on the ship of the fourth predator she killed, but she has to make sure they're offline when hooking them into her ship system because they send out a beacon when online, which led to her fifth and sixth kills. One of the things she's learned about how the Yaucha operates is they each have a hunting route that runs on 10 year cycles. When a predator dies, another predator will pick up its hunting route within a year. When she cross references the hunting logs on the most recent drive she picked up with the others in the past she has obtained, she discovers the Yaucha are modifying their hunting routes. So the predators have become aware of someone or something at least is picking them off one by one. Now Sandy informs her that the ship's gravitational stabilizers are in desperate need of repair and the parts needed are at Port Medway on the planet Tuskid. Why that's a problem is because as Theta points out, it's an Ashtar Industries outpost. The reason why she can't go there is because Theta would be considered an outlaw. She never returned the Sandpiper to Earth like she and her mother planned, so technically it's considered stolen property. Also, six months ago she did go there and had to blast her way out of their junkyard because some people tried to capture the ship in order to claim the reward that Ashtar Industries has out on the Sandpiper. Sandy explains that Port Medway is currently being decommissioned, and it has only two staff members, so the risk of being captured is very low. And that really it's their only option because they're facing complete system failure and have less than 8 days of food left. Sometime later as they approach the planet Tusket, the ship's gravitational stabilizers fail, and they end up crash landing into this frozen tundra on the planet. Now I want to point out this brief moment of worry Theta has. Once she recovers from the crash landing, she believes the Sandpiper system is dead. She mentions that Sandy, the ship's AI, is all that she has left of her parents, her last remaining connection to them. This reveals she views Sandy as family, so she refuses to lose her. Fortunately though, she's able to bring the Sandpiper systems back online. Sandy informs her they crash landed 106 miles away from Port Medway, and that it will take her less than 7 days and no more than 4 weeks to reach it. So there is a possibility Theta could run out of food and starve to death before she even makes it to the port. Theta packs up and is given a list by Sandy of necessary parts for the ship. She then begins her journey to traverse the icy terrain to Medway. 11 days go by and Theta has run out of food. She hunts and kills this alien boar. That night, she has a nightmare that reveals to us that part of what fuels her to kill the Yachua, the one that killed her parents, isn't just vengeance, it's guilt. She feels responsible for her parents' deaths. The next morning, Theta encounters these alien scavengers who want to kill her for her food and equipment. One of them here, named Krug, shoots her in the shoulder with his dart gun. But when he comes up close, she slices his hand off. She manages to subdue them and questions how they got a hover bike that belongs to Ashtar Industries. The aliens reveal they found it at Medway and that nobody is there. What happens next is minor but it says so much about Theta as a character. She tells the aliens that after she takes care of her wound, the aliens can have the rest of her medication and bandages to tend to Krug's injury. And on top of that, she gives them what's left of the boar. The aliens, confused, ask Theta why is she helping them, and Theta answers that they're just trying to survive. She isn't going to kill them for that, but does warn them if they follow her, she will kill them. What this says about Theta is, despite the trauma and quest for vengeance she's been consumed by these past 15 years, she hasn't lost her empathy. She hasn't lost the person her parents raised her to be. Theta ends up arriving at Port Medway. As she walks through the building, she comes across the hung up, headless bodies of the Astar employees here. She quickly realizes a predator has recently been here. What's strange about this is that the planet Tusket isn't on any of the records she possesses of the Yautra's hunting grounds, so a predator being here makes no sense. After finding the control room, Theta goes through the building security footage and sees a predator killing the staff here. However, what she really notices here is this predator killing the staff is carrying the same axe she lost 
during her fight with the last predator she fought. And the predator that killed the staff here is right behind her. It ambushes her, hacking through her firearm, but Theta still fires it in the predator's face. She's able to make a run for it and manages to damage the predator's plasma caster, but ends up within its grasp. She's able to get out of it and jumps out of a window. The predator follows as Theta runs towards the hover bike to get her gun and armor. But that isn't happening because one of the predator's wrist rockets hits her right in the leg, blowing it apart. Now, this is a big reveal here because luckily for Theta, her leg is a mechanical leg. This is further proof that she hasn't gone unscathed in all her encounters with the Yaltra. She crawls into a nearby shuttle and just when the predator is close enough, she activates this shuttle's emergency burners and obliterates this predator. She takes back her axe, and later as she is repairing her mechanical leg, Sandy informs her over comms that an Astar ship is inbound and should arrive within 12 to 15 hours. So she has to hurry and pack everything she needs and return to the ship ASAP. What happens next is another example of how Theta hasn't lost what makes her human. In her inner monologue, she mentions how she feels guilty for taking the murdered staff supplies. She feels like a vulture capitalizing on their misery, but the hunger she feels outweighs her guilt. Also, even though Sandy warns her she is losing time, Theta still takes the time to cut down those Astar employees' bodies and put them in the freezer to be found. Now you can argue how it doesn't make much of a difference, but other than the circumstances, it's her way of giving them some small measure of dignity. As Theta is returning to the ship, unbeknownst to her, she is being tracked. Once she reaches the ship, she begins the repairs, and she starts drinking as she is doing it, because she feels guilty for the deaths of the Ashtar employees, but also she wonders how the Predator knew she would be there. Sandy informs her that based on the data from the last Predator drive, the Yaltra have identified her ship as an Astar industry ship. So they've been searching each Astar Industries outpost for her ship. It confirms the Predators are in fact hunting her. Theta tells Sandy they need to warn Astar Industries in some way without giving themselves away. Suddenly though, the Sandpiper is attacked. Not one, but two Predators aboard their ships have her cornered and are currently firing upon her. Now if you're wondering how they got so close to the ship without being detected, it's just because they used their stealth technology. Theta's ship takes some serious damage and she tells Sandy to take control of the ship. Now this is something Theta has never encountered before, predators working together. She assumed that they were territorial, that they wouldn't or couldn't work together. This just really shows how much trouble she's caused them that multiple predators are being sent after her. Theta hits one of the predator ships with this missile, which unleashes a gigantic blast. It's like that missile was a nuke. When she goes to fire at the other predator ship, she sees it disappeared, but it didn't. It maneuvered itself out of her firing range and starts firing at the sandpiper from below. Sandy informs Theta that the hull of the ship can't take much more. Theta tells Sandy to get her suit ready and land the ship. Even though Sandy tries to talk her out of this, Theta explains that this is the only option they have to fight the Predator on the battlefield, that they have a better chance at surviving on the ground, and that's what the Predator wants, because they have a hunting honor code they live by. Shooting them out of the sky would be too easy. It wants the challenge. It wants to prove itself. However, one thing to remember is Theta is half drunk. So she's not fighting at 100%. She walks out of the ship and yells, Come on out, you b Let's get this over with. The Predator teleports down, and this Predator looks menacing. His armor is badass. It starts to approach her, and just when it's close enough, Theta has Sandy launch her hover bike right at the Predator. This is why I love Theta. She pulls moves like this that are very creative and that an opponent wouldn't expect. This just speaks to her experience fighting Yachua all these years. When you're fighting opponents that are more skilled, more experienced, and physically stronger, you have to be more intelligent and creative. That can make a difference. Even though Theta gains the upper hand in the fight, 
she quickly loses it. She leaps toward the knockdown predator, but it extends its combi stick that impales Theta and then launches her. The predator essentially has Theta beaten. It stands over her, knocking her blade out of her hand and then grips her by the throat. As the predator has her by the throat, Theta realizes she severely messed up. She got drunk, sloppy, and let her defenses down. She served herself up on a silver platter for this predator. Suddenly though, a bright light appears, gaining the attention of the predator. Theta uses the distraction to slip out a dagger and stab it right in its throat. Once she's released from its grip, the predator gets obliterated by blaster fire. Theta crawls to its body and removes its helm and sees it's not the predator she's been hunting. Now the ones who intervened and saved Theta was an Astar Industries team who take her into custody. What's up everyone, James here and we are returning with the end of Marvel's Predator. Make sure to hit that like button if you're excited. So we pick up on the Astar Industries ship, the Turnstone, still on the planet Tusket. We go to the senior science officer of the Turnstone, Paulo Silva, watching the predator they killed being dissected. Now it seems like humans may be aware of the Aucha, the predators, or at least some of them because he asks for confirmation if it is from a crew member that approaches him. The crew member answers he doesn't know and informs him that the girl, meaning Theta, they took in has been hunting them for years. He also informs Paolo that Captain Ferreira who will meet in a second here, has requested he examine the Sandpiper's logs to find out what happened to the crew. From here we go to Theta awakening and quickly realizing she has been restrained. Captain Ferreira tries to get information from her, but she refuses to answer any of his questions and just demands to be released. Ferreira still persistent asks her if she killed the crew of the Sandpiper, and Theta answers no. He explains the last he heard of the Sandpiper was 15 years ago. The crew sent a distress signal to Astar Industry Headquarters, and when a rescue crew arrived, they found only corpses of the crew members, and the Sandpiper gone. He asked Theta how she came in possession of it, but she doesn't answer. Realizing that he's not going to be able to get much information out of Theta, he has her sent to a cell. We then go to Paolo exploring the Sandpiper, and he is shocked at the sight of Predator biomass on display on the wall of the ship. This is a clear indicator that Theta, as she has been hunting the Yautra, is becoming like them in her own way, displaying trophies of her kills just like them. Paolo overrides the security clearance and gains access to the Sandpiper's logs. He finds out not only who Theta is, but sees all of her hunting logs. He leaves to report his findings to Ferreira. Sometime later, Ferreira goes to Theta's cell and confronts her with Paolo's findings. He tells her that they know who she is and saw the ship's video logs of the day her parents and the crew were killed by the Predator. He asks her how she took a ship that was only intended for a single trip mission halfway across the galaxy. This speaks to Theta's ingenuity and perseverance. Theta still refuses to disclose anything. Ferreira informs her that's fine because they're on their way back to Earth and there's plenty of time from now until then for her to explain everything. Theta becomes furious, demanding she be set free and the Sandpiper given back to her. Ferrer makes it clear though that it's not his decision, it's Astar Industries, and they aren't going to allow it. The reason why, as Ferrer explains, is that they're driven by profit more than anything right now, since the space exploration market has become overcrowded. All the corporations are racing to find the next habitable planet, searching for minerals and mining opportunities. So Astar is looking to use every advantage and every bit of research to stay ahead of its competitors. So they need the Sandpiper's records and samples collected. Theta kind of gives in and tells Forever to take the records and everything the crew and her parents collected, but not to take any of her research and anything that belongs to her. Forever responds, Astar owns everything aboard the Sandpiper. Any research done on it is theirs, because it's part of the contract your parents signed. That includes you now, and in exchange for your knowledge of what happened to the crew and how you survived all these years, Ashtar agrees not to pursue charges against you for stealing the ship. 
So essentially, Theta is a prisoner until they reach Earth, and she gives them the information they want. Sometime later, Paolo visits Theta, introducing himself and offering her food. He asks her about her trophy wall of Predator Mass, mentioning he's never seen so many of their artifacts in one place. Theta asks him if he's ever directly dealt with them before. Paolo answers no, but explains he's been studying them for years as sort of a hobby, because not much is known about the Predators, even though there have been recorded encounters since the 1700s. Initially, I thought maybe Ed Brisson at this point knew Prey was going to be set in 1719, but most likely he was going by the flintlock pistol Danny Glover's character got at the end of Predator 2 from the Elder Predator. Theta informs Paolo that more are on their way to Tusket because they're hunting her. Paolo is initially confused about this because Tusket is an ice planet, and everything he studied about the Yautja has shown they've only hunted on Earth during intense heat waves and hotter climates, which we've seen in the main Predator films. This is something I forgot to mention in the last video, but this is why Tusket wasn't on any of the hunting logs of the Predators Theta has killed because they don't hunt in cold climates. In the 1987 Predator, that took place in Guatemala, which is hot all year around. Predator 2 was in LA during the most intense heat wave. And Predator 3, aka Predators, was on a mysterious planet with a hot climate. Theta points out that a bit of cold isn't going to stop them from killing her, and she surprisingly reveals to Paolo her motive for hunting them, which as we know already is to hunt down the predator who killed her parents, the one with a missing mandible. She asks him to give her access to her ship so she can prepare, and when Paolo says he can't, she immediately bashes him in the face with her soda can. Like damn, no hesitation on her part. She takes him hostage, threatening to put a fork in his neck if he doesn't tell the guard to open the door. At that moment, the guard enters the room. She's eventually able to take out the guard, take his weapon. The crew gets alerted of her escape, and moments later, Ferreira flanks her and has her dead to rights. However, suddenly, one of his crew alerts him of a breach, and is killed. Theta says, I told you they would come. You didn't listen, and now it's too late. A predator is on the turnstone, and he is bringing down vengeance on the crew. This predator is making his way through the ship, taking out the crew left and right. It's another massacre we're witnessing. Theta informs Forever that the predator is going to kill everyone, and he's wasting time trying to capture her. Paolo agrees and argues that they should listen to Theta since she's killed 20 of them. I like that Theta is like, um, actually 26. Ferreira ends up agreeing to Theta's help, but makes it clear to her that if she tries to escape, he'll end her himself. They come up with a plan of luring the Predator into the ship's cargo bay, where there's only one way in and one way out. Theta will draw him in acting as bait, and as soon as he's inside, all of the surviving personnel who can hold the gun will open fire with everything they have. Meanwhile, as they prepare and call all personnel to the cargo bay, the Predator is still taking out all crew members he comes across. Once he reaches the cargo bay entrance, he and Theta just stare at each other for a moment, and then he just turns around and walks away. Theta immediately tells Forever he needs to get the cargo bay doors open and get everyone off the ship, but Forever refuses to abandon it. At that moment, this mechanical crawler enters the cargo bay. Theta yells for everyone to run, but it's too late. The crawler detonates, taking out mostly all of the ship personnel and the turnstone. Theta, Paolo, and Ferreira are the only ones who survive the blast. Ferreira blames Theta for their deaths and for leading the Predator to them. He backslaps her, but at that moment, he gets stabbed in the back and ripped apart by the Predator. Its strength is incredible. What's crazy here is Theta tries to escape, but this Predator grabs a hold of her, and we just see the massive physical difference between her and this Predator. Theta whips out her machete, and the Predator just quickly knocks it out of her hand. She has no more weapons, no plans, and no options. In her inner monologue, Theta apologizes to her parents because she feels like this is it for her. She failed, and knows this Predator has her. The Predator removes his biomask and reveals his face. 
This is the missing mandible predator, the one who killed her parents. Now, why the predator removed his mask at this moment is left open for interpretation. You could say he recognized Theta, or he thought Theta was the last person to kill, so he was about to make his triumphant kill. In my opinion, he recognizes Theta and is saying to her, you've been killing my brothers looking for me. Well, here I am, and I'm going to kill you. Suddenly though, the Predator gets blasted by Paolo. When the Predator prepares to shoot him with his wrist gauntlet, Paolo fires again, blasting off the Predator's arm. However, the Predator quickly responds by throwing his shuriken, destroying Paolo's blaster. Theta picks up Ferreira's blaster and blasts the Predator. She says, 15 years I've been waiting for this moment, tracking your kind to every planet, every hunting ground, following the trail of your dead and destroyed lives. The missing manual predator pulls out his serrated blade and destroys her blaster. Theta dodges his next attack, grabs her machete, and yells, all those years for this moment. Theta slices the head clean off the missing manual predator, putting him down for the count. And it's only fitting that she kills the missing manual predator with the machete that was her mother's. Afterward, Paolo asks Theta, what do we do now? Theta answers, there are more of them out there, hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions. I don't know, but they're out there still hunting, and I'm going to find them, and I'm going to kill them all. That's the end of the video and the end of the first volume of Marvel's Predator series. My only gripe with this series is I wish we saw more of Theta's past kills to show how much she's grown and learned from the Yautja, her training, and that this final battle with the missing Manual Predator was more of a knockdown, drag out fight that would require Theta to utilize all of her skills, instincts, and knowledge she possesses on the Predator species, similar to Schwarzenegger's in the first Predator movie and Naru's in Prey. While this isn't the end of Theta's story, there is a second volume where the story gets a bit crazier. Comment below if you want to see all that. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this series. Other than that, make sure to comment your thoughts below, subscribe to the channel, have an awesome day, and always remember every day to hunt and go beyond.